Ed DeRosa with you with Sarah Albadwi. We're throwing it back, getting the band back together. And Sarah, I wore a throwback. The first video we did together, Sam Houston, they didn't get to simulcast this year, so it wasn't a part of the meet, but uh, this was the first time we worked together. We're together again. Welcome back. Oh, well, I, thank you for having me back, of course. And I guarantee that I do still have the outfit that I wore the first video we did, but uh, the memory does not come to uh, the surface right away. I actually bought this today, so we got the old and the new for wow. uh, this uh, preview today. That shirt? Yeah. Target? Uh, Marshalls, in fact. Oh, okay. I like Clearance. Marshalls. Very comfortable. Oh, please. It's no Sam please. Houston, though. Well. Wow. This was free, though. They but can't clearance. be bad. So all works out. All right. Well, we're a long way from Sam Houston. Wood Memorial at Aqueduct. And I was paying attention basically to the big name probables. But even 13 kind of snuck by me. Uh, everyone has to be thrilled to get such a big field. Yeah. And I think that was the sentiment for the Gotham of just with the larger field you have of horses that haven't really stood out as superstars yet. I know Hit Show is kind of that for some people, not for me and, and likely not for yourself, drawn all the way to the outside. It is exciting to see all these horses come together and, and you have more opportunity. And of course, as a better, you want that in your wagering. So it's nice that they get some full fields for these stakes races and these derby preps. And while the Wood has uh, not produced a Derby winner in quite some time, last year's was very fruitful. You got your Preakness winner as well as your Belmont winner out of there. So I think for a race that's been kind of discounted. Plus the solid also ran. Sure. <laughs> Need one of those in every race. Um, for that, I think that it has some life to it and is uh, in a bit of a revival. So hopefully we get some uh, decent results and these horses progress going forwards. Well, uh, you mentioned Hit Show, who I, I am guessing will be the favorite despite the post. Morning line on David's, uh, morning line favorite on David's line. But I did want to start with the rail because Dreamlike is absolutely steaming. A lot of chatter about him maybe qualifying as a maiden. Should he be a runner up in this race? Uh, certainly a win doesn't seem impossible. What have you heard locally? Uh, certainly the connections are no stranger to success in the wood. Pletcher. Rapoli, Elias, Jose Ortiz. Horse has the look of everything, except he hasn't won yet. Well, and I certainly understand why these connections maybe didn't want to face Forte last weekend in the Florida <laughs> Derby um, and, and likely don't think of him as that caliber just yet, even if he does eventually become that, whether it's now or later on in his three-year-old year. Uh, for me, this was one that I, I looked at and I certainly respect, but I think that he's going to have a tough time as a horse that wants to be more forwardly placed, at least from what we've seen so far, breaking from the rail in this full field of 13. However, if you want an education for a horse going into the Derby, this is absolutely the place to get it. No, uh, no doubt there. And uh, we'll go to the outside because the uh, favorite hit show. Are you at all concerned? And I'm asking this because I'm concerned, admittedly. Instant Coffee laid a complete egg and similar path in that he prep, he had the, the prep for the prep and the Lacombe skipped sort of the middle race. And Louisiana Derby was terrible. Same trainer with Brad Cox, same pattern a little bit. Uh, was raced a little bit sooner than Instant Coffee had with the Withers. A lot of time off, though, now draws on the outside. I'm a little nervous as the favorite in this full field. Yeah, is he not the same exact type of profile as Instant Coffee, a horse that has been coming from off the pace, has been getting really good setups in most of his races, has been kind of progressively improving, but has yet to have that really standout figure um, so far, whether you're using Byers or Briz or whatever it is that you're using, he doesn't stand out so much so against his competition. And now he has to deal with this post from all the way to the outside is he really going to be able to navigate through the traffic of all 12 other horses if Clear the Air decides to come here instead of the bluegrass, get the same sort of pace set up? I think that's more likely of any of these other variables. But I, I just don't think he's that good, to be honest with you. And I really question the kind of quality of this horse because I questioned the quality of instant coffee, no pun intended with the coffee, but he absolutely did no running last time. And I think he was exposed. So. 
either Hitcho's going to have to come up with this breakout performance against this field, others are really going to have to not show up, or we're going to see who he really is in here. And as a favorite, I'm not interested in finding out. Yeah, uh, well, we I think this might actually be the most we've ever agreed. Uh, which, I just uh, needed to leave the company for that to happen, right? <laughs> needed to leave the state for us to find <laughs> common ground. I am eager to, to hear where we go next. I led you with the first two. Uh, their X's for you, or at least no-go at the prices. Uh, speaking of Dreamlike and Hit Show, where did you land? Well, I think you have to consider what sort of pace scenario you're going to get. Because in the Gotham, that was a situation where you had that loose horse from the inside go to the outside and end up being in front of the whole field. There ended up being a decent pace in there that really fell apart late. But I think that that loose horse in front of everybody else made a lot of riders make certain decisions that they may not have made if that were the case. And for one of them, that's Mr. Swagger, who was a horse that was further back than we'd seen him on debut. He had a lot thrown at him in that race for the first time with the off track, stretching out, facing a giant field in there. And I think that he was showing some progression, moving up inside of horses until the top of the stretch, where in front of him, you have this loose horse. In the inside, you have the rail. To the outside, you have other horses. And I really don't blame the rider for not wanting to take that chance of trying to go up the rail, be behind this loose horse who could stop, spook, who knows what's going to happen with him. So I don't think that he was ever going to be a win candidate in that race, but he's one that should at least be forwardly placed without needing to be on the lead and is going to be the outside the other speeds. I want to give him another chance to possibly do a little bit better than he did last time. But outside of him, it's all closers for me. I think there's a lot of speed in here. Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned the Gotham and you don't see it. But uh, one thing I had to learn once you left is some editing techniques. So uh, the Gotham I'm replay really will be going on. What's that? I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Uh, necessity, the mother of invention. But uh, Slip Mahoney... Yes. Uh, caught my eye basically for the same reason. And he was way, way out of it, uh, which was not really his style. And, you know, you mentioned the loose horse, Muddy, that day. There's some things maybe conspiring against him. The figures he earned two and three back, and one of those was in the slop, which is why I'm not as eager to use that as an excuse for how far back he was. Uh, but he was drawn further outside. Some post relief here, although it is two turns, but he's by Arrogate, uh, and he's another, he's an other Cox. So that always uh, sort of catches my eye. Not that I have any data to back that up, but uh, I thought he was interesting. Uh, similar reasons you mentioned with Mr. Swagger. I think the Gotham could end up being a, a key race, at least for this, maybe not a Kentucky Derby prep key race, but certainly uh, with looking for some alternatives against the favorites, both of those had excuses. Right. And with Slip Mahoney, too, I don't totally know what to make of his race two back where he was on a gold rail getting Lasix and Krupe has kind of just been a disappointment since then. Another horse that's still a maiden for Todd Pletcher in here. Hmm. But he did come back and get that second in the Gotham, even though he did regress figures wise. So you at least have to respect that he can keep consistent form with where he's placing. Now, I don't know what that means from a number standpoint, and I don't really know what number they're going to run in here. Um, but He's one that if you want to take a Brad Cox horse that is drawn more close to the rail, getting to save a little bit of ground, going to get a, sort of a similar trip as you'd want to imagine for Hit Show, he, he makes more sense at a better price than his stable mate. And with 13 in here, uh, we haven't even talked about a, a four, a third of the field. Uh, no, we haven't. But I feel like that. Honestly, those are the four I thought cover it. Um, you know, the the two favorites certainly make sense, but the price, no good. The two out of the Gotham did make sense for me and are going to be better prices. Anyone else I'm overlooking? Um, I would be willing to give Shadow Dragon a little bit more of a look just as another horse that is going to pick up some pieces late. And I know he didn't run that well in the Fountain of Youth, but if you look around, Forte, Mage, Cyclone Mischief, even his stablemate Rocket Can, they're not here. And there aren't many yeah. horses here that have run against horses like that so far and been able to be close to them or coming at them late. And I thought that him getting a little bit more ground in here on 
you know, a close to the rail, but he doesn't need to be a part of anything early. I thought that things would set up in his favor. And I mean, I mean, General Banker is another one that he's getting absolutely no respect on the tote board. He's never been under five to one, and yet you can rely on him to come pick up a piece late. So if you really do think that this is going to be another situation where the pace falls apart, which I think is totally possible, you just keep him in third. I mean, he he keeps picking up checks and has almost picked himself uh, up a placing in the Derby. So I think that you at least have to respect his consistency to uh, come along for a piece of things late. Yeah, and uh, the I guess we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the pace since we're so bullish on the closers in here. Uh, Arctic Arrogance, co-third choice, I believe, on the morning line, which I agree with running the stuff I do. It definitely, you know, I, I think he'll have his share of supporters at that six, eight to one uh, level just because, A, he has pace. Some people like that. Certainly Lascano, Linda Rice, if you're a fan of betting her horses. I just don't see any way that this one sees it, sees it all the way through. And it, because he hasn't been doing that lately, right? I mean, he's been able to be up close, either setting the pace or right off of it. He's getting his blinkers taken off now, I believe. But he hasn't been able to see things through. And I don't see what changes here for him with even more pace pressure coming at him. Although you at least have to respect too, that he's been able to duel with other horses and still hang around a little bit. He is running good races. I just don't know what's good enough to win this time. Right. And it, it's, uh, you know, his presence, certainly in my mind, anyone else who might think of being on the pace with him compromises their chances more than it does his. Uh, but even so, there, there's enough talent right behind him, as, as we've mentioned, that I just think gets roughed up going nine furlongs, but uh, I'm glad you did mention the opportunity to maybe, you know, key some underneath uh, general banker in your case, maybe others, because with 13 horses, I think these are fantastic opportunities. As you know, I'm a big multi-race player. It's kind of what I gravitate toward uh, with the way I handicap, but I I've definitely found these races that get 10 plus runners, uh, the, the verticals, they pay more than you're used to on a normal day. The pools are bigger, more combinations. So definitely encourage people to avail themselves to those options. Of course. And this is the last race on the card for Saturday. So there's no uh, wildly competitive or insanely <laughs> unhandicappable maiden race to follow. It is this. This is it. Race 11. This will this close out it. all of your multis. So a good way to end it for Saturday. And I'm glad you mentioned that because with the 11 race card, I'm sure we'll see full card selections from you. Uh, you did yeoman's work. Was it last week you did three tracks? Yes. <laughs> yes. Plus 27% ROI. Are you doing Keeneland this week or sticking to Aqueduct? Well, I got to compete with you for Keeneland. We have to revive our old uh, competition. And I know that you'll be I'm posting in. picks. So uh, yeah, I'm absolutely. In. All right. Well, Keeneland, look for that for Keeneland. Him. But I mentioned Aqueduct because, and I'm, I told you I'd ask you this first, but I, I will get out of here on this. You've been there now full time at Naira. I know you always followed Naira, but now that you're there, you're in the mix. You're talking to other handicappers on a daily basis. Uh, you're seeing the races. Anything you've learned or uh, myths dispelled about handicap and Aqueduct or Naira in general uh, since you're in, in it every day? Um, you know, this is ex an extremely boring answer, but I found that things are uh, a lot of what they actually seem. <laughs> there aren't too many major surprises other than the fact that um, everybody brings in a lot of food. Uh, there is never a weekend that I am without something to eat. I eat more there than I've probably eaten for the last year of my life um, entirely. There is always pizza, donuts, pastries. They keep us well fed in the uh, the production and talent area. So um, that is something that I just like, it's, it's always like shocking to me, the amount of food that is available to all of us, which has zero to do with handicapping, but is a nice added bonus for those long days where we have shows on all day and everybody's working hard to put the show together. Um, and I guess the only other thing I would add is that if you see something misspelled or there's the wrong horse in the wrong race or there's some clip of something on TV, um, it's likely my fault. So <laughs> if you see any of those, it's on me. Uh, don't blame anyone else. Are you doing the Fox? Are you involved? Are you doing copy or? 
uh, I'm not on whatsoever, but I am right. doing all the, you know, helping with the behind the scenes of putting That's the show I mean, together yeah. and all the different elements. So, uh, yeah, no, it's really cool. It's it's really cool to see their process of how they sort through everything and how everything is organized. Um, and there is a lot of attention to detail and uh, a lot of really good, hardworking people there. So really cool to be a part of the team. Love it. All right. Well, well it's always a, a pleasure to have you a part of ours and uh, appreciate you coming back for a Wood Memorial cameo. Anytime. So just bottom line, top pick. Uh, I'll go to Mr. Swagger. I'll give him another All opportunity. Right. We're, uh, we're on the Gotham uh, also rants here uh, at, well, I just, not at HRN on this HRN video, Sarah with uh, swagger me with uh, slip slip Mahoney. It's, a pretty fun name. Well, Sarah, I really appreciate the time and looking forward to uh, Chipotle down the road. Absolutely. Next time you come to Saratoga. Is there a Chipotle there? We'll find one. <laughs> Uber <laughs> Eats from Albany. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Bye.